Our discovery of the planet LTT 9779b was a landmark in the field of exoplanets, an extremely rare world that is being roasted by its parent star. How such a beast can exist is still a mystery to be solved, but as part of that quest, we turned the eye of Spitzer towards the planet. And for the first time, let's go and peer inside the atmosphere of an ultra hot Neptune. Just over one month ago, we announced the discovery of the first ultra-hot Neptune planet, LTT 9779b, a world so hot we didn't expect to find any atmosphere at all shrouding the large core, but our observations suggested otherwise. I recommend you go watch that video before continuing any further here, the link is in the description below. But with an orbital period of only 19 hours around its sun-like host star, the temperature of the planetary atmosphere, which makes up around 10% of the total mass of the planet, should be around 1,700 degrees centigrade, or 2,000 degrees Kelvin, meaning we can maybe expect some metals to be ionized and molecules to be dissociated, providing a rich chemical soup ripe for astrophysical study. With that in mind, we decided to begin investigating this by spending some of the final precious hours in the life of the Spitzer Space Telescope to first of all prove that this planet indeed hosts a thick atmosphere, but also to delve inside and search for elements and physical processes that may teach us more about the lifestyle of this extreme world. Now Spitzer retired on the 30th of January 2020 after nearly 17 years of successful operation, but only three months before we were able to observe the final transits of LTT 9779b, included in this work using the Infrared Array Camera or IRAC, adding another milestone to the legacy of this great mission. The first of the two works we will discuss here is led by Professor Diana Dragomir from the University of New Mexico in the USA. And in this study, we focused on observing the secondary eclipses of the planet across two of the Spitzer bands, centered at 3.6 and 4.5 microns in the infrared part of the electromagnetic spectrum, capturing a total of 12 individual eclipse events. Now, secondary eclipses are different from the typical transit events that we have discussed in previous videos. In this case, the planet passes behind the host star, not in front of it, and as such, the drop in the brightness that we measure is not due to the light being blocked, absorbed and scattered by the planet, but it is due to the loss of planetary light, or in this case thermal emission, that the planet is giving off. So that is to say that once the planet passes behind the star, we lose any light coming from the planet and we only have the stellar light left over. Now this is a very powerful technique that allows us to measure how much light the planet is giving off, so how hot the planet is, and therefore allows us to model the spectral energy distribution, or SED, of the world, which is a measure of how much energy it radiates away at any given wavelength or frequency. And once doing this for LTT 9779b, we found something quite unexpected. Here we can see some examples of the eclipse measurements from Spitzer at 3.6 microns, where the grey dots are the original measurements, the blue data points with error bars are those measurements combined together to increase the signal-to-noise ratio, and the red curve is the best fit eclipse model that provides the properties of the event and therefore the characteristics of the planet. We find that the eclipse depth at this wavelength is only 500 parts per million, a very small change indeed, yet it is significantly deeper than that recorded in the longer 4.5 micron wave band, which provides a depth of only around 400 parts per million. This is intriguing in itself, since a typical SED at these temperatures should continue to increase towards longer wavelengths, not decrease, which indicates that there is something absorbing the red light within the planet's atmosphere. We can see that effect here in this figure, showing the eclipse depth in parts per million against wavelength increasing towards the right. The Spitzer observations are the black points, and it is clear that the longer wavelength measurement appears to drop when compared with the bluer measurement, meaning they don't agree with a pure SED model shown by the grey dash line. The red model is the best approximation of the data, 
a retrieval that was done including various molecules that could be causing absorption and showing the feature here. The grey region around the red model is the 68% confidence limit bounding the region where we have 68% confidence that the model should fall within that range. So some wiggle room if you like. Now this region is fairly broad due to the lack of data points constraining the models and the size of those uncertainties or error bars on the measurements. When we now add these data points to our best estimate of the optical secondary eclipse from using the original test light curve that was used to discover the planet, we find that the best explanation is for some kind of molecular species to be absorbing a lot of the red light. Our best candidate for the absorbing species is that of carbon monoxide where we expect it to be high in the atmosphere, providing a strong molecular source that is absorbing the planetary energy. However, more observations are needed to confirm that CO is indeed responsible as the absorber in this case. Finally for this part, we also find that LTT 9779b does not show any temperature inversion in its atmosphere. That is to say, there is no positive deviation of the longer 4.6 micron wave band eclipse depth, indicating a heating source higher in the atmosphere. Generally, planets cool the closer we get to the edge of the atmosphere, as pressure drops at thinner and thinner layers, so the temperature also drops. But if there is a layer of molecular absorbers, like titanium oxide, for example, this can heat the upper layers, giving rise to an increase in the temperature again. These inversions are fairly common in more massive gas giants with temperatures similar to this planet, the so-called ultra-hot Jupiters. And of course, we have temperature inversions in the Earth's atmosphere. However, why doesn't LTT 9779b show such an inversion? Future measurements of the planet's metallicity, the amount of species heavier than helium in the atmosphere, may shed some light on this question. Instead of measuring only the secondary eclipses of the system, we also set out to measure the change in brightness as the planet passed around a full orbit. This is called the thermal phase curve. This part of the work was led by Professor Ian Crossfield from Kansas University in the USA, and here we made use of two full orbits of the planet, which meant two observation runs with Spitzer staring at the star for a 19-hour period as the planet whizzed around its orbit. These two full orbits were performed in the two separate Spitzer wave bands, and again we find some startling results. Phase curves in general provide an overall global view of the planet and its atmosphere, allowing the thermal structure to be probed, along with the composition and some of the dynamical processes that could be going on within the planetary atmosphere, like winds for example. Here we can see the 4.5 micron channel phase curve across one full orbit of the planet, similar to the secondary eclipse measurements we saw before. The black data points with uncertainties are mean combined measurements from many individual observations. The red curve is again the best fit model of the data. And first off, we can see that the main transit of the planet in the center of the image at zero phase and either extremity we can find the secondary eclipses, the smaller deviations from the mean sinusoidal pattern. It is this smooth drop and rise of the light curve across the orbit that we are interested in here, the sinusoidal pattern. The actual amplitude or height of the brightness change is found to be only 350 parts per million in the red 4.5 micron band. We did not consider any further the bluer band since there appeared significant noise left over in the analysis providing unreliable measurements. However, the amplitude we did measure give rise to a dayside temperature of the planet of over 1,900 degrees Celsius, where the dayside is the side of the planet that is constantly facing the star. Remember, this is highly likely to be a planet that is tidally locked to its star, where the same face of the planet is constantly facing the star, and the other side, the night side, is constantly pointing away out into space. The same configuration we have here with our own moon. The night side temperature we find is actually about 1000 degrees Celsius, meaning there is a fairly strong temperature difference around the planet of nearly 1000 degrees. And if we think about this for a second, this means that we have detected the signature of heat being redistributed or transferred around the world, with different phases of the planet having different temperatures. 
So here we are observing how efficient or how powerful winds are transporting heat around the planet. An incredible feat in reality. Also, the hottest point on the planet is basically the point closest to the star, with a possible very small offset of 10 degrees to the west of this substellar point, indicating that there is also something inhibiting efficient heat transport around the planet. Likely the planet is heavy in metals, rich in elements that are heavier than helium, like water vapour for example, and this is the inhibiting factor, but more follow-up studies are needed to confirm this possible explanation. So imagine, we have only just discovered this new type of world, the first ultra-hot Neptune, LTT 9779b, and now we have been able to investigate its atmosphere, the inner workings of the planet, and the dynamical nature of processes that shape its existence. We have found molecules present in the atmosphere, likely carbon monoxide. We have evidence that the planet is highly metallic, and we have witnessed the effects of winds, pushing hot material around the planet and keeping the night side at a temperature of around 1000 degrees centigrade. Imagine what more we will know about this world in the near future. LTT 9779b promises to illuminate the physical processes and nature of planets like Neptune, providing us a window into how the universe builds and indeed destroys worlds that encroach too close to their parent stars. Good night.